and the black and Hispanic community. The blueprint is in the Bible. This is what the elder men should be teaching the younger men and the younger women teaching, and the elder women teaching the younger women. Get that for me in Titus, you got that? We gonna come back to Hebrews. Get that in Titus. Because we have a lot of older men out here. We got a lot of older sisters out here. Let's see what your, what your God-given responsibility is. Hebrew, Titus chapter two, verse two. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober. Slow sister, how you doing? You enjoying the festival? Okay, okay, you got a question? Okay, you been watching this? And you wanna know where you can where you can come and congregate? Where's one of our Miami brothers? Get, hey, one of the Miami brothers, give her a flyer. Okay, this you got a flyer? So you gotta you gotta come to the closest school to you right now is Miami. Okay? You know it's uh you from Fort Myers. We got people in Fort Myers? Okay, so so we got people at Fort Myers that come down to Miami because the next closest school is Orlando. So Miami's probably closer to you. So you know it's a commandment for us to come together on the Sabbath day, right? Give me that in uh, Hebrews chapter 10. You got that? Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. You know why we have to assemble ourselves together? Because you know what? Trying to get through this walk by ourselves is very difficult. Right. You understand? Because now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna point something out. You said you've been watching for a while, right? So my question is, when you gonna start applying God's commandments? Because what? Because you're not doing it right now. Our practice, you understand that, right? But now, you got, you don't know how many days you got left on this earth, right? Right, okay, you got that? Okay. The book of Sirach, chapter five and verse seven. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. You see what the Bible says? It says make no tarry. Like don't delay. Since you've been you've been watching, right? You already marked. Because the most I know you've heard this word. Right, right. Now you come out here and you say, I need to congregate. And you know what? You get around righteous sisters and they're gonna help strengthen you, sister. Right. Okay? In this walk. What you got? Check this out, sis. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 37, verse 12. But be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. So be continually with a godly man or with a godly woman. Someone you know to keep the commandments. Okay? Because this walk, I'm going to tell you something. Give me that um, in Proverbs, when the wicked seduces the righteous. What's that? Proverbs 12. Because you know what? When you keep... When you keep hanging around and dealing with the ungodly, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna stay in the midst of your sin, right? We're gonna read that for you. This is the this is our blueprint. Okay? This is how we get ourselves right. The Bible says examine yourself. You gotta examine yourself against this. We can't examine ourselves against the the philosophies of our family that ain't keeping the commandments, right? Because you know as a sister, you might you might ask. You might got a sister, a mama, a cousin. Hey, I'm dealing with a certain situation. What, what would you do? They gonna give you some ungodly. That's right, they gonna give you their own advice. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12 and verse 26. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. You hear that? 
So when you start putting on that dress and fringes and a border of blue, and they say, what's wrong with you? You think you better than me? Wait, wait. Because you put on a head covering? So they called your mother and told something wrong with you because you was covered up modestly. All praises. Read that again. The book of Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 26. Yeah. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces them. You see that? So now, I'm going to show you. Give me that in 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 2. I'm going to show you that, that that is biblical what you just said. That is biblical what you said, how... They get upset because they losing one of their girls. Right. You understand? Because your mind is turned into repentance. Right. Read that. First Peter chapter 4 verse 2. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. That's what we're doing today. That's what you see going on today. We're doing the will of the Gentiles. We breaking God's Sabbath. We got revelry. We got ungodly music. Read on. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. So we're going to be out here getting drunk. We're going to be whoring. Right. All of that madness, right? right? Read on. Wherein they, they think it's strange that she run not with them to the same excess of riot speak, speaking evil of you. So when you stop doing that, they're going to be like, what's wrong with you, girl? They're going to call your mama. Something wrong with her. Because she's not doing what? Read that again. Wherein they think it's strange. They think it's strange now because you've been doing, running doing the same thing with them. That ye run not with them to the same excess of riots, ex speaking evil of you. Speaking evil of you. Give me Colossians 3 and 2. Now, this is what you got to do. All right? You've been watching the videos, right? Now, you got to let your light shine when you go outside the house. You know? You, you already know. Right? Okay. Listen to this, sister. The book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. Set your affection on things above. What's that mean? You got to have the mind of Christ, sis. Right. Love not the world, right? Okay, read on. Set not your affections on things up. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. So listen to this. It says, kill your members on the earth. It's going to explain what that means. Read that again. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication. Fornication. You know what fornication is when you read in Leviticus chapter 18. Threesomes is fornication. Right. Having sex while you're on your menstrual is fornication. Right. You understand? Having sex with near kinsmen and kinswoman is fornication. Right. Read. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. You know what covetousness is? When you want something that somebody else don't belong to you, right? Okay, is that it? That's it. Okay, so, you've watched this on the videos. You you standing before the prophets, you're getting the word today. Since the next move is on you. You understand? Who you say you out here with? Okay, all right, so you've been sharing this with her, right? Okay. All right, sis. You got some Acts 319. This is for you, sis. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. 
So the Bible tells us to repent, okay? Repent meaning change your ways, okay? Because the Most High don't want to kill us. He doesn't have no pleasure in killing us. Matter of fact, you get, give me that uh, Exodus, I'm sorry, Ezekiel 18. The Most High don't have no pleasure in killing us. You understand? 18 to 30. The Most High, He will want us all to repent. But you see, many of our people is walking up and down the, down the streets right now. As the word comes out, they ain't interested in here. You know? Read. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 30. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways. You see that? Every last one of us out here is going to be judged by the Messiah according to our ways. You understand? So that ain't just you, sis. We ain't picking on you. We all gonna be judged according to our ways. Read. Say to the Lord God, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. You see that? Your sins will be what kills you. You understand? Read. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? Read that again. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. Remember we just read set your affections on things above? That's what he's telling us. We gotta renew our minds, because why will we die? Why will we die when well, we got a choice to live? The Bible says keep my commandments and live. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.